Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the America's Health uh, Ethics Virtual Forum. My name is Andrew Blasey, and I serve as the Technical Secretariat for the Forum. It is now with great enthusiasm as our next series of speakers begin to tee themselves up uh, with our technical team that I introduce them and their institutions, who within just a few minutes will sign the first collaborative agreement between one of Brazil's leading educational institutions and the world's leading educational institution dedicated to preventing corruption and strengthening ethical conduct. First is Dean Thomas Stelzer of the International Anti-Corruption Academy, or IACA, based in Vienna, Austria. To tell you all a little bit about IACA, IACA is an international organization and educational institution comprised of 76 state parties and four international organizations. The Academy is the only international organization with a mandate focused solely on fighting corruption through education, research, cooperation, and technical assistance delivery. IACA strives to complement the work of the United Nations in the field of inclusive sustainable development through project implementation and the provision of technical assistance. The activities of the Academy include strengthening national anti-corruption legislation, institutions and practices, enhancing good governance, promoting whistleblowing protection and organizational integrity, and enhancing corporate governance and integrity as well as compliance standards, topics that all have come up today during the forum so far. IACA also delivers anti-corruption education and training to the public and private sectors, professionals, as well as their practitioners, academics, media professionals, and civil society. The Academy League currently offers three master's programs as well as various standardized and tailor-made capacity building training. IACA also creates platforms for dialogue and networking across national and regional institutions, think tanks, research centers, as well as its pool of global lecturers and researchers of which I'm privileged to count myself among those. After Dean Stelzer, we will hear from FGV president, Carlos Ivan Simonsen Lial and professor Ligia Mora Costa, coordinator of FGV ethics. FGV is a private and nonprofit Brazilian higher educational foundation founded 77 years ago to promote Brazil's educational development in various activities from research to teaching. FGV was rated the world's third best think tank and the best admired administered think tank by the University of Pennsylvania's 2020 Global Go-To Think Tanks Index Report. FGV has eight schools, one of those eight schools, which we'll hear from also today, is FGV EAESP, one of the top business schools in Brazil. The origin of the business school lies in cooperation agreements that entered into by Brazil and the United States all the way back 70 years ago to the 1950s. The Center for Ethics, Transparency, Integrity, and Compliance Studies, or FGV Ethics, is one of 18 applied research centers at the FGV Business School. It is a multidisciplinary forum comprised of diverse professional members committed to the value of ethics, integrity, transparency, the fight against corruption, the protection of the environment at work, and diversity and sustainability. FGV Ethics works at the development of strategies, policies, and tools for business management and public management, both in the local and international arena focusing on such topics as knowledge dissemination, exploitation and production of applied knowledge, support and development of legislative and or self-regulatory measures, and the mobilization of the civil society. FGV ethics team is made up of professors, researchers, students from FGV EAESP, as well as foreign and domestic educational institutions. FGV Ethics also develops topics related to compliance, ethics, transparency, and integrity for individuals and companies, whether they're public or private organizations. With this scene setting, we'd now like to turn the floor over to our speakers, who I understand are still being teed up at this time, and then we will uh, have start with Dean Stelzer. So let me just take a quick look to make sure that Dean Stelzer is available. Um, and I see we have him now, so uh, if we could put Dean Stelzer through. We will have the Dean go first. Then we will turn the floor to President Carlos Ivan Leal of FGV. And then we will turn the floor to Professor Costa of FGV Ethics. Upon the completion of the remarks, the parties will sign their collaborative agreement. So Dean Stelzer, welcome and the floor is yours. 
Greetings, uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear colleagues and friends. It is a great honor for me to be here today. Let me start by stressing that I strongly believe that the America's Health Ethics Virtual Summit is a very timely initiative. And the International Anti-Corruption Academy fully supports its goals. Uh, I've just finished uh, another panel uh, with the United Nations Organization on Corruption. And one of the findings was that in the context of the COVID crisis, the health sector uh, in relation to compliance and fighting corruption is one of the very critical areas. Transparency of the healthcare systems is fundamental to ensuring social stability and trust within societies. This in turn is key to ensuring sustainable economic growth and just and peaceful societies. From the perspective of the International Anti-Corruption Academy, uh, issues related to anti-corruption compliance and ethics in the medical and pharmaceutical sectors should occupy a central place in our future debates on this topic. We believe that pharmaceutical companies should implement codes of ethics and anti-corruption compliance programs. Moreover, establishing efficient policies on conflict of interest procurement and gifts and hospitality are of pivotal importance. Regarding the issue of conflict of interests in the medical and pharmaceutical sectors, managing them is today one of the most pressing issues in international efforts to fight and prevent corruption. Such conflicts may occur not only between medical staff and patients, but also between management of healthcare establishments doctors and drug and medical device companies, or between the management of research institutions, clinical researchers and drug and medical service and medical device companies. The International Anti-Corruption Academy is convinced that to address this issue, professional associations, hospitals and pharmaceutical companies should ensure that the employees receive regular compliance training focused on measure to prevent misconduct in the procurement process, ways to behave in face of conflict of interest and violations of compliance policies. The Academy would be very much interested and ready to explore with the relevant organizations in the region, possibilities for cooperation on developing targeted capacity building activities uh, in this area. This being said, I would like to focus now on the main reason for us to hold this session of the summit. Uh, IACA is proud and happy to have signed the Memorandum of Understanding with the Fundação Getúlio Vargas, a leading and highly prestigious business school institution of Brazil. I am very grateful to Mr. Carlos Ivan Simons Leal, the president of the Fundação Getúlio Vargas, and Ms. Ligia Mauro Costa. Uh, the Fundação's ethics coordinator for their cooperation in the process of developing this document. The signed memorandum sets a framework for cooperation of both organizations on issues of common interest. In particular, it foresees joint efforts, including projects to foster and promote capacity and institution building programs in the anti-corruption field. It is a basis on which I am sure we will build a very concrete initiatives to be implemented in the near future. I hope that some of them will deal with the issues of ethics in healthcare systems. I'm also convinced that together we will be able to launch numerous anti-corruption initiatives that in turn will stimulate the socioeconomic development of the region. Let me conclude by saying that I firmly trust that thanks to the new partnerships established during this forum, the International Anti-Corruption Academy will be able to capitalize on the momentum that has been built and set in motion the initiatives which can turn the tide in the global fight against corruption. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dean Stelzer. We truly appreciate those terrific remarks. I would now like to turn the floor over to President Carlos Ivan Leal of FGV. Carlos Ivan, the floor is yours, and you may speak in Portuguese should you wish. First of all, good morning to all those in Brazil and South America. 
good afternoon for those that are in Europe. Uh, special good afternoon for Dr. Stelzer and thanks for the ceremony. I'm very happy to be here today because as we all know, uh, corruption is an endemic illness. And depending on which society you live, it may be bigger or much bigger. And when it gets to be too big, it really becomes a real problem. We will never end with corruption. There will always exist issues that have to be fought against, that we'll always have problems, etc. But when it becomes too big, it becomes a too heavy a burden for the society. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean that the simple notion of fairness goes away. And the society that doesn't have a notion of fairness is not a real society. It's just a bunch of people that are reunited in a territory or region, and it, they are not act for the mutual benefits of all of them. In Brazil, in Brazil, we are evolving towards a more developed society. Recently, we had many cases of corruption. And the experience of FTV has been that it's far from a simple object. It is a sophisticated animal that has to be understood and has to be fought with rational weapons. So it's very simple to say we'll just throw corrupt people into jail or we'll just put very heavy fines. But sometimes what you need to do is to create a mechanism that will prevent corruption from appearing at all, from coming into existence. Some big problems, they usually start very small. So you have to cut them before they start. And one area where corruption is, has to be fought prioritarily is health, public health. We, I had this personal experience some years ago. We reorganized at FGV uh, the buying, uh, product buying from hospitals, from university hospitals in Brazil. And amazingly enough, we reduced costs enormously. I'm not saying that there was corruption there, but, but certainly there was a lot of lenience. And if you allow that, you'll end up you have a tendency to move towards corruption. Therefore, it is very important to have rational models of control that will curb corruption. As I said, you will never end it 100%, but you may reduce it a lot and avoid that it grows. It is important that these models be based on data on information, on intelligence. And it takes time to gather and organize that. And that's why I'm very happy today because we are signing this agreement and I understand that we shall develop initiatives into that direction. We are going to foster our studies towards corruption prevention in an area that is very important for Brazil. Uh, the pandemics, the pandemic here in Brazil has left many questions. In the newspapers, 
you have people uh, accusing other people of corruption, from vaccine to other uh, to other products uh, buyings. It is never clear what happened or what didn't happen. There are many people accusing and many people saying it's nonsense. But at the end, what you see is that there were no informational systems good enough to bear the brunt shock of this pandemic. We were not ready to deal with the need to expand our expenditures so fast in very specific areas. And that creates problems, especially in a country as big as Brazil, and that has many states. Sometimes I do compare Brazil with the European Union. There's 26 states in Brazil, 27 countries in the European Union, and the same budgetary governance that the European Union has. So we have a lot of problems. And we discuss and discuss and discuss. We have copied 100 years ago, 120 years ago, we have copied uh, the American federalism. And uh, like the United States, we also got problems in deciding who was going to be responsible for what in the fight against COVID and so forth. So, what FGV thinks is that it's absolutely necessary to organize data, to do research, to understand what the problem is. We will be gathering information on that. We will be trying to create from observed facts, models to fight the possibility of corruption. And of course, theories will yield from that and those theories will be tested. And that is our aim uh, in this agreement. From our part, you may count that we will find many questions. I am not saying that we will find all the answers, but we will certainly discover many interesting things that will be, that will prove themselves to be very important. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Carlos Ivan Leal. I'll now turn the floor over to Professor Ligia Costa. Thank Ligia, you very the much. floor is yours. Thank you very much, Andrew. It's really a pleasure for me. It's an honor for me to be here with Dean Thomas Stelzer and with my president, Professor Carlos Ivan Simons in Leal. IACA and FGV, FGV ASP and the Center for Ethics, Transparency, Integrity and Compliance Studies. FGV Ethics, in my personal opinion, made history with their signatures today of the Memorandum of Understanding. Why? Because this Memorandum of Understanding recognizes the importance of international collaboration at the global level in the prevention and the fight against corruption through education. Today's signing is a vote of confidence in a new approach to research and education to battle corruption. It has been a long, long journey unto this moment, but a journey that actually is still continuous. I can see at the horizon, the outlines of a world with more integrity and less corruption. And we are all, all, part of this. The signature of this memorandum of understanding is no doubt a major step forward to Brazil. And I hope to the whole region, to the whole Latin America. And uh, we all have to continue to build a free corruption world with a lot of courage and determination. 
last but not least, I do not want to move on and take you know the floor from the showing the, the main object of this um, and get together today, which is the signature of the memorandum. But I'd like to say last but not least that FGA ethics is very much pleased to inform as well the launch of a unique anti-corruption index to access the vulnerabilities of the healthcare sector related to corruption with a focus on frontline healthcare stakeholders, such as medical doctors, patients, healthcare planes, manufacturers, distributors, agents, et cetera. And the main goal of this new index is actually to identify the vulnerabilities of the sector from the perception of from frontline healthcare stakeholders. This index is made possible thanks to the support of ES, Instituto Etica Saúde, and maybe it may be one of the first contracts that this memorandum of understanding with, with IACA that we are signing is going to be and uh, prepared to. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. Thank you very much for the opportunity of saying some words in the name of FGP ethics. Thank you so much, Professor Ligia Costa. To commemorate the signing of this memorandum of understanding between IACA and FGV, we will ask the technical team to please put up a slide as well as to have all three uh, members of the team uh, up at the same time. So we'll wait for that to happen. Excellent. And in just a moment, for purposes of the picture, I think, as we all know, signing uh, ceremonial signings via Zoom are interesting affairs these days. Uh, in just a moment, I'll ask the technical team to take me off of the Zoom uh, so that both Dean Stelzer and President uh, Carlos Ivan Leal can ceremonially sign. And then we will have the screen again reposted. Uh, with both gentlemen on the screen for purposes of taking the picture. So could I ask the technical team to please remove me from the picture? Uh, and then so then Dean St uh, Stelzer and President Leal, if you could now ceremonially sign at the same time. Excellent. Thank you so much. This is perfect. Thank you so much, Dean Stelzer and President Leal. Uh, congratulations on this historic memorandum of understanding between IACA and FGV. It's been an honor to have you all here with us today. And we are just a few minutes ahead of schedule. So I'm going to ask the technical team, if you could just for a moment, put the slide for the agreement as the main picture of the room, and then we will uh, take a few minute break. So thank you again, uh, President Leal and Dean Stelzer, and we'll be back with all of you in just a few minutes. Thank you.